This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. There may be situations in your life where you will hear him say, be still, watch, and hold, hold to your peace. That means something trying to steal your peace, hold your peace. Hold your peace. What's your motivation to wait on God? It's not forgetting what he's already done. The motivation for waiting on God, not forgetting what he's already done. Calling all men. It's time for you to find out your place in the body of Christ. You are not going to be satisfied until you do what he commissioned you to do. I wanted to do right but couldn't, but now the Spirit of God lives in me and he gives me power to do what I could not do on my own. I expect to get understanding. I expect for me to grow in my grace. So when things come our way, when things come up against us, we know that we're coming through. See you there. God doesn't do things for us so we can just shout about it for a day or two and then forget his works. He does it so he can build hope, an earnest expectation that will be maintained until you, can need, until you need it the next time. David did it, didn't he? David said, oh, I remember he ki I killed a, the lion with a covenant with God. I killed a bear with a covenant with God who is this uncircumcised Philistine that doesn't have a covenant with God, and I do. I do. Lord, what you want me to do? Take that rock, go get five smooth stones. Do you understand? He was waiting on God, and then God consulted and gave him something to do, and he did it, and he won that battle. He waited on God. But he didn't forget what God had already done. What's your motivation to wait on God? It's not forgetting what he's already done. The motivation for waiting on God, not forgetting what he's already done. So go back and pick up some stuff that you forgot and remind yourself that same God, that same God is who I'm consulting. That same God is who I'm waiting on. That same God who delivered me out of a pit, out of depression, out of trouble, out of finances, out of depression, all that. That same God is waiting for another call. Think about this. We are the patient, right? In a situation, the first act of waiting is to seek God's counsel before any attempt to, to uh, uh, is made to solve the problem ourselves. And so when we wait for God's counsel, we are submissive and open to what he tells us. We are not telling, what he, telling him what he must do. Mm -mm. I'm not going to tell him what to do. Now, Lord, what you need to do is I need this money by three. And if you don't do it, I ain't serving you no more because I'm tired of waiting. Now, this is the third time I done asked you. Now, God don't need you to be who he is, but you do need him to be who you are. Amen? We are like patients in a hospital calling the doctor for advice on how to treat the patient. What do you do as a patient when you call the doctor? You're not telling the doctor what to do. You're waiting on the doctor to tell you what to do. All right, now watch this. Psalms 34, verse 5 in the New Living Translation. This really blessed me. Psalms 34, 5 in the New Living Translation. He says, those who look to him for help will be 
radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. Why? Those prepared things you don't know about? God working for you? He says, there'll be no shadow of shame. What is he saying? You're more concerned about being put to shame if you choose God first and it don't work out. God is saying, choose me first. You won't be put to shame. You won't be put to shame. But we're afraid to choose God first. We won't pick and choose God to do what we know he can do. Um, let me give you this scripture. I'll read over it pretty quick in Psalms 25 and 3. Psalms 25 and 3. Uh, let me read this in the Amplified just real quick. Psalms 25 and 3. That's a powerful scripture we just read. That's powerful. You need to take that to work with you tomorrow. I'm going to choose him and I'm going to be radiant with joy. You know what he says? You're going to be bouncing around the office with a big old smile on your face because you done seen him work it out. He says, yes, let none who trust and wait hopefully and look for you be put to shame or be disappointed. Let them be ashamed who forsake the right or deal treacherously without cause. And so there it is again, addressing the fear of shame if you choose to consult God and to wait for God before you pursue human aid. That's powerful. That's powerful. And, 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 it, and I think it hit me this way because I'm like, this is exactly what I did before I knew any scripture. <laughs> this is exactly what I did when he called me to do this. And I'm like, there's, not, there's one thing we got straight. He says, don't do nothing unless you check with me. Wow. And so we have to be careful, watch this, not to forget what he did to continue to pursue, to consult him. You will not be put to shame. There will be no disappointment, the scripture says, when you do this. Oh, how I dream of a church who will not walk in worry or fear, but who knows that they have a covenant that says, I'll be your God and you'll be my people. Wait for me. Wait for me. You know, sometimes if you'll just pause in the midst of you reacting to a situation, if you'll pause, you will discover at that place, I have not even turned to God. I have not even looked to God. I'm worried, I'm stressed, I'm crying, I'm cussing, I'm doing all of this stuff. I haven't even looked to God. And then you pop, you know, a lot of that is uh, panic. Panic is groundless fear. Why? I didn't even look to God. Something happens when you choose him first. He now ministers to you what you need to sustain you in your faith. Amen. Now, the answer may come in two forms. So you go to God, you're waiting for God, uh, you're seeking him first. Of course, the Bible says over and over again, you, if you seek him, you'll what? He said, if you just seek him. Seek him, you will find. So now there are two things you're going to get from this. Number one, he may tell you to do something. <laughs> Number two, he may tell you to do nothing. Here are the two things you get for waiting for the Lord. He will tell you, may tell you to do something. He may tell you to do nothing. Somebody says, well, that ain't so deep. It is. <laughs> because as Christian people, we always assume we need to be doing something. And sometimes you're doing something when he said do nothing. Oh, my God. Let me, let me show you some scripture. Go to Isaiah 30. Uh, verse 15 and 16. Isaiah 30, verse 15 and 16. So I, I choose to wait for the Lord. So what am I waiting for? Do something, do nothing. You are now a barefooted priest. 
You are a barefooted priest, and it's a, it's a lot different walking in the woods with shoes on versus when you take your shoes off. You're now going to be very cautious about every step that you take. These two verses, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. So notice what he says, the key here to salvation is rest. In quietness and confidence shall you be strengthened, or shall, 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 shall be your strength. Quietness and confidence. That's, that's not, you ain't saying that. You ain't saying that. But now, here's what it, go, here's what it means to, to, to wait for the Lord. Either he will tell you to do something, or he'll tell you to do nothing. And somebody says, well, what if you ain't heard him? Do nothing until you get instructions. <laughs> the problem with a lot of Christians, we walk in this assumption. You know, you hear Africa, and then you move. <laughs> And then you get up there, Lord, I don't know why I so, so, have so hard over here. You told me to come to Africa. God said, I didn't tell you to come to Africa. <laughs> I said, Africa, I gave you a word. You, you made a sentence out of a word. I just want you to pray for Africa. <laughs> God said to some of y'all, entrepreneurship. And then you go, God told me to quit my job. He didn't tell you to quit your job. He said, entrepreneurship. Lord, what do you want me to do? Not quit your job. I just want you to find out what the word means first. We were going to see if you were it. You got to understand, most of the time, God ain't giving them whole sentences that, that folks say. It's just, it's a word or two. Progressively putting things in you so that the right motor and motivation has been put on the inside of you as he gives you instructions. Slow down. You think you, you ain't even did the last thing he told you to do. Slow down. Now, watch this. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14. Oh, praise you, the Lord. Man, I feel some and sense some spiritual growth going on in this place. The devil seriously need to pack his bags and get out of your neighborhood. It's like, oh, 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 I got this. I got this. Me and the Lord, we, 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 we got this thing. I am waiting for the Lord. Put your apron away and quit waiting on him and start waiting for him. All right, now watch this. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Wow. Which he will show to you today. Isn't this interesting? Moses said to the people, fear ye not. What did he tell them to do? Be still. Be still. And watch this. Be still, seek salvation. He gonna show it to you. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see them again no more forever. And we don't need you to do nothing. We need you to stay still and watch. The Lord shall fight your battle for you. You shall hold your peace. What's the instructions? What's the, cons the, 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 the consultation that we receive? Be still, watch, and hold your peace. Oh my God. There may be situations in your life where you will hear him say, be still, watch, and hold, hold to your peace. That means something trying to steal your peace, hold your peace. Hold your peace. That's your valuable asset. You remember what we said? Uh, you, you don't, don't spend your peace on, 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 on anything that, uh, anything you gotta spend your peace on is too expensive. All right? All right, now. Now, let's change it up a little bit. So far he's saying be still, do, and that's huge. That's huge. Most Christians are, well, this is what the Lord told me. You very rarely hear somebody say, what did God tell you? Nothing. <laughs> somebody said, well, were well, you missing it? No, he ain't tell me nothing, so I ain't gonna do nothing. That's easy. He said nothing, I ain't doing nothing. I've been trying to get God to say this little one thing to me, and he ain't said it yet. I really wanna hear it, but he ain't said it yet. Now, if I go and do something I wanna hear that he didn't say, don't be talking about it. Don't, don't go to God talking about, trouble in my way. 
I have to cry sometimes. He's like, you ain't never had to cry. I ain't tell you to come here. Now I got to do this, get you all the way back where you need to be and start all over again. Now his mercy and grace is there and he'll do it. All right, now watch this. Second Samuel chapter five, verse 19 and verse 20. Second Samuel chapter five, verse 19 and then verse 20. These are great scriptures here. This is about David. And so verse 19, here's David waiting on the Lord, waiting for the Lord. And David inquired of the Lord. That is the definition of waiting for God. David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go up to the Philistines? Isn't that something? David was waiting for God, which, which this is what he did all the time. Of course, you know, but you know, besides the time he got lust on him and had this woman's husband killed and then slept with her and, and all that. And then God came and gave him mercy and grace. He, he paid a little bit with Absalom. Mm -hmm. So that's he. David went to some stuff, but the boy had a heart for God. I said David had a heart for God. Amen. David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up to the Philistines? When's the last time you inquired of God? Shall I take this job? You ain't saying that. All you know is they paying me three times more than I made the last time. Of course God want me to take this job. And as soon as you left, then where you left tripled in business and God was working on something there. I don't know which one was the best. What I know was you should have stopped and inquired of God. And the job required you to move. And then you move way to Seattle. And then you left your church. Then you weren't getting fed like you used to because you thought all churches were the same. And his assignment was here. And you thought the assignment could be anywhere. Well, I'd just be a partner and watch television. And you saw the television, wasn't that? It cut off at 21 minutes. <laughs> and it may show you the end and it may not show you the end. And you're like, oh Lord, would I just get on the stream? And then they tell you to do something in College Park. What you supposed to do, come down every week to do what he told you to do? Inquire of the Lord. Shall I go to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? Look at that. Look at that. Now he is getting ready to tap into that prepared thing. And then here's what God said. Remember, for those that wait, on, wait for me, I'm going to go to work for you. I'm going to go to work for you. Again, how many of you want God to work for you? How many of you are tired of working for yourself? How many of you are ready for God to work for you? All right, now watch this. And the Lord said unto David, all right, now you're getting ready to give instruction. Go up! Wow, that was loud. <laughs> Go up. <laughs> For I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. Go up. But remember, I had to start with, shall I go up? Shall I pursue? That's waiting for God. And the Lord answers, go up. And he says, without a doubt, I'm working for you now. I will deliver the Philistines into thy hands. You gonna do what you do. Look at verse 25. Let's see what the result of this. Verse 25, and David did so as the Lord had commanded him. And he smote the Philistines from Geba until thou, until thou came to Gezer. He saw great victory because he did what God told him to do as a result of waiting for the Lord. You getting this? Now, we don't stop waiting for the Lord as soon as we got that one instruction. The reason why David won a lot of his battles is because God will say go, and while David going, he's still consulting God. I'm almost there, what you want me to do when I get there? You keep waiting on it. You keep waiting on it. It ain't no one-time deal. I don't know what it is about Christians. They, they go towards this one time. Christians live life like it's an event, and we go from event to event. It shouldn't be an event. Renewing the mind is not an event. Renewing the mind is a, is, a, is a life process. 
Okay? Now, let's look at this. We don't wait for God when we begin to act. We continue waiting for God. Proverbs 21, 31. Proverbs 21, 31. Y'all getting anything out of this? Yes. this? Bible study is for, right? To clarify and make plain and make clear. And then you walk out of here and you do it. This is the power of the gospel. And all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 31. Um, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. So if you put your trust in horses and chariots, but don't put your trust in the Lord, so we're still waiting for God. I'm waiting for God where my safety is concerned. I'm waiting for the Lord. Um, that year, uh, 18, I'm going on 19 years ago when I had that wreck in Sacramento, California, it was, it was, I was waiting for God and I asked him, do I need to go to Sacramento, California? He said, no. I said, but I gave them my word. My integrity is on the line. Now, now here's the first thing you'll learn about God. He is not going to argue with you. <laughs> okay? Now, we went. We were still consulting God. We made our confessions. Now, in the midst of me consulting God, there were little things like this that happened. If you ride in the front seat, put your seatbelt on. If you do this, do that. Just little things he was doing at that time. And each of us were doing what we need to do, and our lives were preserved. What I'm saying is not the one-time instruction you get, but walk waiting for him. Walk waiting for him. Keep your ears open so as you're stepping, he says, stop. Some ain't right. And just do that. Stop it all. Something ain't right. We're going to have to do this meeting later. What happened? God told me I need to just hold up for a minute. Now, it depends on who you're dealing with before you say God said, because a lot of people, well, you're weird. You say, I, I, I think we need to hold up on that for a moment there. And uh, it'll do you good. You know, you're about to get married, and all of a sudden some stuff done broke off. And you see stuff on, about Waldo, you ain't, you, you ain't know that, what was that? <laughs> and uh, old Waldo, good old Waldo. <laughs> and uh, boy, that's an old name, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and old Waldo, Waldo started carrying on, and you know, most of the time is I done already sent the invitations out. And so you know you not, so you and Waldo, y'all, it ain't, that ain't, it ain't, you seen some things that just, um, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it's just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then you hear this, he's not the one. All right, and then you say, but, I don't know when I'm going to get another one. <laughs> then he say, but he the wrong one. <laughs> then you say, but I want him, and God is done. Until you're in the middle of it. And he says, remember when I... And then grace kicks in. He tries to work something out that you, you did, trying to be all spiritual deep, and he just told you don't do it. And you kept giving him reasons why. But everybody already come. The invitation's already out. It's next week. I don't care if it's the next hour. If God tell you not to marry somebody, but we done spent this money. Most of the time is we don't spend this money. Man, you better sow that money as a seed. <laughs> Say, Lord, all the money we spent on the wedding, it's a seed in the name of Jesus. We sow it as a seed. And take that ring off and say, Waldo, appreciate you, bruh, but uh, <laughs> this ain't happening. And Waldo tripping all out and everything, like, see, that's exactly why this ain't happening. See, God will let you know why immediately. Waldo, Waldo, Waldo he start floating. <laughs> Turn around like this, and he go, la, 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 la. you're like, that's a demon. See, God says, see, that? I told you Waldo has, has some problems. <laughs> Imagine you in the bed with Waldo, and y'all making love on your honeymoon night. And Waldo trying to talk like Barry White. 
and then that bear white get a little bit too deep <laughs> and scratchy. And Waldo say, ah, let's suck your blood. What? <laughs> It's time for God to be who you say he is, the leader of your life. You call him Lord, then make him the Lord, allow him to lead and guide you. Do you ever feel empty, confused, or not sure of what to do next? These may be signs of not spending enough time with God. When you get along with God and get away from the clutter of the world, He will begin to instruct you, renew you. He will begin to give even the expectation of what you need, but you've got to learn how to enter into a rest and wait on God, amen? In this series by Creflo Dollar, you will learn the importance of spending time in God's presence. You ain't the weak little pathetic thing that you used to be. You've been hardened a little bit, and now you can send all your haters a, a Christmas card thanking them for, for helping you to mature and to trust in God. Since I can't trust you, I can trust in a God who will never let me down. Personal relationship. Get the Alone with God five message series right now for a love gift of $30 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Omaha, Nebraska, Woodbridge, Virginia, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, we are on the way. Join pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar for one day only. The Word of God in the mouth of a believer coming out of your mouth produces power, produces change, produces authority that has to tell the sickness and disease. You cannot remain because of the authority that I have been given through the Word of God. I come because I enjoy the Word, and the Word is awesome, and you always get a good message that comes breakthrough. If they want answers to their life and they want change, then they need to come because there's always a word that's going to bring revelation knowledge. Join us in Omaha September 13th, Woodbridge on October 11th, and Philadelphia on November 15th for one day only. Hurry before time runs out and claim your free seat. Call, text, or go online to register today. I pray that this broadcast blessed you today. Now, I believe in the grace of giving, and I know that there are many of you out there who want to support all of the work that we do here at Creflo Dollar Ministries. Now, your financial seeds are instrumental in keeping this broadcast on the air, making ministry resources such as sermons and study notes available through numerous avenues, and allowing us to assist people affected by natural disasters, among many other things. Rest assured that when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to help our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world. Thank you for choosing to be a blessing in the lives of other people by sending in your financial donations to this ministry. If you'd like to give now, you may do so by calling in or giving online at creflodollarministries.org. Thank you and God bless you.